Welcome to the Shikama Live Show with your host, Shikama. Happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day, I guess. To America. Remember, white women took advantage more of him than black people ever did. As much as the popular, that means white, culture tries to portray him as a black savior, blacks gained zero from him being around versus white women who came out with affirmative action and all sorts of other programs having been named as minority from it. The result of MLK on the black community was that black financial basis, black business, was destroyed, leaving a gutted black community and a massive fatherless dilemma where none existed before as 80% of all black children were born to a two-parent house, which was drastically more than even white people at the time. These are the facts of the legacy of MLK. I will never let you forget. The person you, black, should be praising and lamenting the death of is, of course, and not for religious reasons, Mr. Shabazz, not MLK. Finally, the last time, this time last year, I was involved in a lawsuit with the MLK family behind the scenes. You can't make a penny off of his image. They keep a type handle on his image. So much for a national hero. But let's get into why he was not a quote-unquote savior of the black community. First of all, he was put into place. He, was, he wasn't some sort of grassroots person. He was sent to destroy a real financial movement which was gaining ground at the time. And although I've already made several videos talking about him and black people have come out the woodwork saying oh no that, that, that was our savior that was our messiah against massa which i don't even understand. i don't get how, how can you not look at if we're going to go about and talk about a historical person how can you not go back and actually look at what went on before him and what went on after him the fact is, he gutted the black community. The black community was destroyed. And it was only at the ninth hour, or I'm sorry, the eleventh hour, that's the saying, right? That he finally looked up and said, oh my God, what have I done to my community? Well, it was too late then. And as soon as he opened his mouth about that, they had him. Do you know they called him radical? They meaning Hoover? CIA, FBI, radical, MLK, radical. Why was he called radical? Simply because he was black. And finally, let, let's go to some, some of his final, final, final speeches. In the latter years of his life, Dr. King, already a Nobel Prize, Peace Prize laureate, frequently spoke publicly of the three evils holding back his Society. What is his society? Oh, that's the uh, I Have a Dream Society. The, that's the Peace Society. That's the uh, black people holding hands with white people society. What was holding back his society? Racism, poverty, and militarism. In one controversial speech, Beyond Vietnam, delivered on April 4th, 1967, exactly one year before his assassination, and almost six years before U.S. troops withdrew from Vietnam, Dr. King called his government, quote, the greatest purveyor of violence in the world today. I want you to let that sink in right there. This man who was lauding and praising Kennedy and all of those guys finally spoke out and called his government the greatest purveyor of violence in the world today. He argued national investment in the war had already doomed President Lyndon Johnson's war on poverty to failure, a claim that the New York Times, Times objected forcefully. In the address, Dr. King implored the necessity for the nation to undergo, quote, a radical revolution of values, explaining we must rapidly begin the shift from a thing-oriented society to a person-oriented society. When machines and computers profit, 
profit motives, and property rights are considered more important than people. The giant triplets of racism, extreme militarism, oh sorry, materialism, and militarism are incapable of being conquered. That's a year before his death. And the day before his death, of course, he then spoke out directly against the Vietnam War. Oh, he was invited to the White House, called the White House from jail beforehand. Oh, he was put in jail by the White House, by the way, and threatened and said, if you don't get those Negroes voting for Democrats, we will kill your entire family. Did you not know that this, this was what was going on? I bring you truth. If you can't handle the truth, please go play in traffic. Go play some extreme sports. I know black people love extreme sports, right? That's why you ski so much. That's why you jump off of buildings. That's why you jump off of perfectly good airplanes, as, they, as the saying goes, right? He was killed for finally speaking up, for finally realizing, I have been used. I have been a pawn. And of course, you all hate my videos talking about JFK being terrible for black people, but you'll accept the lie more readily before a truth. I can't even get you to admit that you're praying to a blonde-haired, blue-eyed Jesus and that it was a, a Roman god. If I can't get you to accept that MLK was terrible for black people and he just died, a lot of you are still alive when he was walking around on the earth and saw firsthand how we went from having our own soda shop to having bombed out looking, Iran looking, Iraq looking cities as quote unquote black neighborhoods to where it was before where Negroes were rolling around in stretch limos. Oh yes, we still have stretch limos, but it's not everywhere. And although there was quote unquote poverty, it was simply a matter of a lesser income. And they keep tripping you up on words like wealth versus income. And I've tried to destroy that ignorance. I say, black people, you need not praise him. Okay. He did nothing for you. Nothing. Do you hear me? Nothing. Zero. White women came out like gangbusters. They got themselves declared a minority and then proceeded to take advantage of every single program intended to quote unquote fix the ills of what was wrong with black people versus white people. It also was supposed to include Native Americans, Hispanics, and Asians. But no, the white women succeeded all of us. Think on that. Thank you for watching the Shikama Live Show. And, and, and no, I don't want you to say, but at the end, he realized it was too late by then. When he realized how badly he had been used and then spoke out, there was no legislation to fix it. There was nothing that he was capable of doing at the end because he was gone just as soon as they realized that he recognized that he was a pawn the entire time. Now, do I think he recognized he was a pawn at the end? No, I'm pretty sure he knew he was a pawn from the very beginning. You can't be given all sorts of international accolades and be stupid, can you? Can you? It was all intentional and you were the prize.